Hey everyone, so this is a follow-up to my previous video about saddle tilt where we talked about the uh, pro cyclists and some of the new rules, etc. And in this one we're going to talk about uh, the female cyclist. Now why are we going to do this? Kind of what brought this up? Well, for a number of years now there have been more reports coming out that a really significant number of uh, women in the, in the pro peloton have experienced really severe saddle issues, saddle discomfort and irritation to the point of um, needing surgery and and there's sort of been a uh, jump in in the number of uh, female pro cyclists actually getting a surgery called a labiaplasty. And a labiaplasty real simply is just removing some of the tissue so that there's just less there and there's less in the way. Now is there something here or is this just because they ride a lot? You know the, the male pro cyclists they have a lot of problems uh, on the bike as well is it just because these two groups spend a lot of time on the bike? And I think this is the case, that it, it, these are people that spend an inordinate amount of time on their bike. However, there is something anatomical going on here that, that I think is important to, to discuss. And it has to do with something called the pubic arch. And so you might ask, well, what's a pubic arch? Well, that's actually this right here, this angle under, on the underside of the pelvis. Now this is a male pelvis, and so here's the pubic arch. This is what's called the pubic symphysis. These right here, this, it, these are the sit bones. That's actually when we're sitting in a chair, that's where we contact the chair, okay? Now on a bike, that's not necessarily where we sit. Most people do not. They sit further forward onto this ischial rami right here, okay? And so when we tip forward, we sit further and further forward here, we're gonna contact further and further forward on that, on this structure right in here. And just for, you know, just reference, so our bladder sits behind here in this pelvic cavity, but the most important thing I want you to understand is where this pubic arch is, everything right here is where all the sensitive soft tissue is. This is all the stuff that when you're on a bike, you do not want to be sitting on and irritating. So as I mentioned, this is a male pelvis. Okay, you can see this, this pubic arch is very V-shaped. So let's look at this picture. This is a picture of another male pelvis uh, on a, and this is the pubic arch. You can see the outline here and it does really reinforce just how V-shaped this, this arch is. Now let's move over here. This is a female pelvis. Now look at the difference in the pubic arch. Look at how much more rounded it is and also look how much lower it is. Let's, let's overlay these one on top of the other so you can see the difference in height. Just take a look at how much lower the female pubic arch is. Now what does this mean? Now in general what this means, and this is again, these are generalizations, there are going to be individual differences, but in general what it means is that when we tip the female pelvis forward that they're going to contact the soft tissue sooner. So because in the male pelvis, this arch is taller with the soft tissue here. The, the male pelvis can tip forward further before we contact soft tissue in this area. And this is more than likely why we see you know, more extreme measures being taken in with some of the female cyclists to go undergo a surgery like the labiaplasty to remove tissue so that there is less tissue in the way. Now, we talked about saddle tilt in the last video and uh, I mentioned that the UCI changed the rules from you used to be able to just have the saddle tilted three degrees from horizontal and now it's up to about nine degrees or so. This was accomplished mainly because a group of saddle manufacturers petitioned the UCI for the rule change. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why they probably did that. However, you can make an argument that the biggest benefactors, the biggest winners in this rule change would be female cyclists especially that want to assume this very aggressive, more aerodynamic position. Because the important thing to keep in mind is this this tissue irritation becomes more of an issue, regardless of your gender, when we try to assume a more anterior pelvic tilt, a more aggressive, more flattened back position, uh, more aerodynamic, you could say. Now, many non-professional riders uh, do just fine on their saddle without you know, without tipping it nose down aggressively or anything, because they just have, they're more comfortable for other reasons in a more upright position. It might have to do with their hands or their shoulders or their neck and, and uh, their back. There's other reasons why you would 
um, maybe not have a very low handlebar position. So this is not necessarily something that's applicable to everyone. As I mentioned in the last video, this is not necessarily something that everybody is going to want to do, is just drop the nose of the saddle down and get in the most aggressive position possible. Because it's important to remember that anybody choosing this position, this nose down saddle position, needs to be aware that there are significant trade-offs sometimes. And again, I do go into that in the last video, but real briefly, it's that it's gonna, the, the, the saddle being nose down will uh, produce a position that is a little less stable for the pelvis. The pelvis is gonna wanna slide off the front of the seat. Uh, this will event, uh, inevitably throw weight onto the hands and the upper body, and so it can increase the amount of pressure people feel on their hands, and can increase the likelihood of incidence of numbness, and also just increase, like I said, the amount of work that the upper body, the chest muscles, the back, and the neck muscles have to do to support us on the bike. So the takeaway here is that female cyclists, due to, like I said, in general, the lower height of that pubic arch and the, and the increased likelihood of contacting soft tissue when we tip the pelvis forward um, should really kind of take this the saddle tilt, the bar height, all their setup issues become that much even that much more important since they may be more inclined to get soft tissue irritation on the bike. So I hope this answers a few questions out there. Um, as I mentioned before, I do have a premium program available on my website. It is f uh, about solving saddle discomfort and saddle problems. Um, there's actually over an hour of uh, video streaming on it right now, and there's more being added actually uh, this weekend. Um, so please check that out if you're interested. But that's all I have for this one. Thanks everybody, and I will see you next time.